Hello, and welcome to Linear Inequalities. My name's Tuesday Johnson. Here are some applications. Every time, every time I forget the screen. Oh well. Nutrition. A dietitian is planning a snack package of fruit and nuts. Each ounce of fruit will supply zero uh, units of protein, two units of carbohydrates, and one unit of fat, and will contain 20 calories. Now each, each ounce of nuts will supply three units of protein, one unit of carbohydrates, and two units of fat, and will have 30 calories. Every package must provide at least six units of protein, at least 10 units of carbohydrates, and no more than nine units of fat. Find the number of ounces of fruit and the number of ounces of nuts that will meet the requirement with the least number of calories. What is the least number of calories? Now, usually the question is how we identify our variables, but the question is, what is the least number of calories? So we have to go back a statement. We'll go back to our, our action sentence. Find the number of ounces of fruit and the number of ounces of nuts. So we identify our variables. X is the number of ounces of fruit, and Y is the number of ounces of nuts. Now we have inequalities, right? We have information about protein, carbohydrates, fat, and calories for each of these. So protein, nuts give us zero. And that's not true. Fruit gives us zero, nuts give us three, and we need at least six units of protein. So at least means it could be bigger, but six is absolutely the smallest. For the carbohydrates, fruits will give us two units, and the nuts will give us one unit, and we need at least 10 units of protein. Uh, excuse me, carbs, that word, carbs. Uh, fruit and nuts, uh, fruit has one unit of fat, nuts have two units of fat, and it needs to be no more than, or less than or equal to, right? No more than. It could be smaller, but nine is the biggest uh, for fat, nine units of fat. And our calories equation, 20 calories for each ounce of fruit, plus 30 calories for each ounce of nuts. If we graph these, and I've graphed them here on Desmos for you, in order, we have the protein equation here, and let's call it red. We have the carbohydrates equation here in, yes, here in blue. And then the fat equation here in green. Calorie equation, not graphed, just our inequalities, our restrictions. So let's take a closer look at this graph. And we see that if we want to go on top of the red line, I want to go to the right of the blue line and below the green line. The only feasible region we have is right here in this triangle. Right? Those are the only answers that make sense. And if you uh, solve for y, uh, blue line equals green line, so what is that? Probably carbohydrates and fat. Find their uh, solution. We'll find the corner point 11 thirds comma 8 thirds. I use fractions, not decimals. Make friends with fractions. I promise you, they're, once you get a hold of it, they're so much easier. Um, here we have 4, 2, which is an easy one to see, and we also have an intersection here at 5, 2. So use the easy ones you can and find the exact values. It'll help you out in your calculations. Because now that we have our corner points in a um, bounded, feasible region, we can test in an, our objective function. Calories are equal to 20 times the uh, 20 calories for each ounce of nut fruit plus 30 calories for each ounce of nuts let's see when we plug in 8 thirds for y and 11 thirds for x we end up with 153.3 calories I know I just told you to use fractions and here I'm using a decimal it happens um, if we plug in 4 2 the number of calories is 140 and if we plug in the solution the corner point 5 2 we find our calories are 160. We want to know what the least number of calories in our feasible region is. So the dietitian should package these snacks with four ounces of fruit, two ounces of nuts, for a total calorie count of 140. So we know exactly how much of each in order to get the nutrition needed. Let's look at another example. And we're all working stiff, so let's make this an unreasonable one. Nikita holds two part-time jobs. One is for Acme, where she makes $40 per hour, while the other is at Beta, while she makes, where she makes $30 per hour. She never wants to work more than a total of 12 hours in a week, and really, who could blame her? Nikita has determined that for every hour she works at Acme, she needs two hours of preparation time. 
and for every hour she works at beta, she needs one hour of preparation time, and she can't spend more than 16 hours on preparation. Nikita's got stuff going on. How many hours should she work per week at each job to maximize her income? So let's identify the variables. How many hours should she work at each, uh, per week at each job? Let X be the number of hours for Acme per week, and Y be the number of hours for beta per week. Now our inequalities will be the amount that she works. Number of hours for Acme plus the number of hours for beta has to be no more than 12. No more than means less than or equal to. Now, there's a lot of different ways that we could describe this, this relationship that's not just the words less than or equal to. No more than, fewer than. Look for words like that to kind of clue you in that there's an inequality. For preparation, it takes two hours uh, for every hour of work at Acme of preparation, and it takes one hour for every work uh, hour of work at Beta, and the preparation time has to be no more than 16. And income, for me, it's all about the money. Uh, that's 40x plus 30y. When we graph this, we only have two uh, constraint equations, not too bad. And they're both less than or equal to, so they both shade towards the zero, zero. As long as your uh, constant is positive and you have a less than or equal to, you'll end up sh shading towards the origin. Uh, as we look closer at this graph, we find our corner points. Our corners are at zero, zero, 11 comma zero, four comma eight, and eight comma zero. Now she wants to work at both jobs. So the only reasonable corner point, right? She could work at no place and then have no money and that's not sounding fun. Uh, 11 hours all at Acme, eight hours. I wrote one of these points wrong. Which one did I write wrong? Uh, let's see. Uh, this is eight zero. This is zero eleven. Mistakes happen. Mistakes happen for professors. Mistakes happen for TAs. Mistakes happens for happen for students. Never be afraid to correct an error. Leaving it in, that's where the problem comes. All right. So she wants to work no hours for Acme and eleven for Beta, or she wants to work eight hours for Acme and none for Beta. She wants to work both jobs, so we're just going to use the 4-8, the only reasonable corner point uh, in order to keep both jobs. We will have 40 times 4 plus 30 times 8. That is, Nikita should work for 4 hours for Acme, 8 hours for Beta each week in order to maximize her income at $400 per month. All right, linear programming. Keep it slow, keep it steady, and always check your work. Thank you very much for watching this series. I know you didn't have much of a choice with it being already put in Blackboard for you. Um, but I do have other videos. Feel free to subscribe to Math with Tuesday on YouTube. Um, if I have enough subscribers, I can start doing live videos whenever you have a request. Thanks again. Have a great uh, semester.